It was just after New Year's. We were about to go out to the bar. It was my last night in Winnipeg before heading back to school. So we got in Adam's car to go there. Um, we were driving down Bishop Grandin. It was cold, it was icy, it was windy. Uh, I, I did think that we were going too fast. Adam uh, had a new car and he may have been trying to show off or he may have just been driving too fast, um, but we were definitely going quite fast. We slid for quite a while on Bishop Grandin uh, before we actually went towards the ditch, so I had time to think that we were going to go into the ditch and I was kind of hoping that the trees would slow us down and I thought of all that and as I was thinking that, we hit the post. When I came to in the ditch, I didn't really know where I was or what was going on. I could hear my friend Amanda screaming from the road. Um, as I looked around, my friend Tyler Musi was laying on my lap. He was shivering, he was unconscious. And amidst the crumpled parts of the vehicle, I could hear my friend Tyler Burnside speaking, but I couldn't see him and I didn't know where he was. There was a really loud noise. I looked around, I wasn't sure what had happened. There was little pieces of electronic car on me that were really hot, so I threw them off. And I looked and I could, the only person I could see was Tyler. The roof had been sort of torn off the car, so I couldn't see Michael. The driver's side of the vehicle had been completely torn away and Adam was nowhere to be seen. I remember seeing Tyler and wondering why he wasn't moving or doing anything wondering if he was okay. After about five minutes, Michael was, Michael was hysterical for a little bit, but after a while he calmed down and started being rational. He got a toque for Tyler and he was asking me if I was all right, talking to me and reassuring me. Um, and I was also talking to Tyler, trying to reassure him and talk to him, even though he wasn't responding. Uh, Tyler, I could see the whole time we were trapped in the car together and we were kind of intertwined and I saw him stop breathing while we were stuck there. When the EMTs finally arrived, I remember feeling really relieved. I'd never been so happy to hear sirens in my life. Um, they came down into the ditch and I heard them say that Adam had been thrown from the vehicle and that he was vomiting blood. When they took me into the back of the ambulance, I remember the EMT asking, had we been drinking, had we been using drugs or anything of the sort to cause the accident? And my answer was no, we had just been going too fast on an icy patch of the road. I remember very clearly being in the ambulance. Uh, they tractioned my leg, which is pulling the broken bones apart because I had broken my leg. But it had turned out that I had also fractured my hip in more than one place and I had uh, chipped my spine. I also had uh, partially bleeding uh, spleen and, uh, and some bruising and cuts. When I arrived at the hospital, the EMT let me borrow her cell phone so that I could call my parents and tell them to come down to the hospital. I remember my brother answered because it was late at night and I just said to him, put mom and dad on the phone. And I hated the sound of his voice because he knew something was wrong. And uh, I talked to my mom and my dad and I told them that we'd been in a car accident and uh, found out they'd be driving from Swan River to Winnipeg to be there as soon as they could. Shortly after I got into the hospital, I was talking to my dad on the phone and he was the one that confirmed that Adam and Tyler had died. And the police officer told me he had something to tell me and I just started crying and I told him, don't tell me now. I didn't want to hear it because I knew that they would died, but that I just didn't want to hear him say it. I knew that as soon as a police officer said it, that it was real and that there was nothing else we could do. I was, I was good friends with Adam. I knew him since junior high. Um, he was a really nice guy. He would do anything for anyone. He was that kind of person. Adam and I had grown up together in Swan River. His backyard shares a fence with my grandparents, so 
even from little kids, there'd always be the ball that jumped over the fence and he'd always be there to <laughs> bring it back and then come play along for the rest of the game. Uh, Tyler was one of my best friends. Along with Michael, the three of us were best friends since, since I met him in grade seven. Um, we were really close. We spent a lot of time together, especially in high school. He had taken courses in business and he was working for his dad in the family business. Um, everyone knew him as just a really nice guy that you just want to spend time with. I'd known Tyler Musi ever since he had moved to Swan River. He'd been my best friend. He lived just down the street from me, and I probably spent as much time at his house when I was home for the break as I did at my own. I hesitated to tell Adam that we maybe should be going a bit slower, and I wish that I had told him. Um, you shouldn't ever feel like you can't tell somebody to slow down, especially when your safety is, is a concern. I can't be mad at him because I know it wasn't intentional. Like, I know that he would never consciously decide, I'm going to do this. But at the same time, it was a risk. It's really hard dealing with losing your friends. I think about them every day. I think about the accident every day. I know that I'm lucky to be here, but at the same time, it's Hard to consider losing your two best friends lucky. It was a miracle that we survived. It was bad luck that we hit the pole at all. I don't know. There's no more powerful reminder to be appreciative of the things you've got. Even just having another <laughs> New Year's party, I'd give anything else for it to be the way it was a year ago. But. Adam and Tyler are a constant reminder that I've got to do something great with my life. Because they can't. Most people hear about these kind of accidents and say, oh, it was just teenagers going to the bar and drinking and being out on a Friday night. But we weren't those people. We're normal people, we go to school, we have jobs, we're not, we're not party animals or anything like that. We were just going out on a regular night and, uh, and this happened. When you think about what c could happen, it's not as important to get where you need to go as fast as you can. You have to drive for the conditions, you have to watch what's going on around you, so please just slow down.